The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program, depending on their content. Uh, next speaker is uh, uh, Jared Wright, and uh, he is uh, uh, presenting the uh, Proportioning and performance evaluation of concrete with recycled glass fine aggregate. So, you please. Uh, well, good morning, everybody. Hopefully, I can match uh, Dr. Magoob's enthusiasm. Um, uh, so, uh, I am Jared Wright. I'm a master, uh, currently a PhD student at Penn State. Uh, we did this work uh, with Chris Cartwright, who's currently a master's student at Penn State, and uh, Farshad Rajabur, who's our advisor. Um, our work is Proportioning and Performance Evaluation of Concrete with Recycled Glass Fine Aggregate. Before I begin, I'd like to say um, just overall um, uh, thank you to uh, our lab supervisor, Dan Fira, who really does a lot of good work and is really outstanding with helping us out. Um, so let me begin by saying what, what's our research motivation here? When you go and you go and try to recycle a glass bottle, where do you think it goes? Well. Every year, about 13 million tons of glass is produced. Only about 25% of that is sent into a recycle bin like this. However, 20% of that is sent to landfills because it cannot be recycled back into typical glass containers for various reasons such as uh, color discrepancies as well as um, deleterious materials that are on top of the glass itself. So what we want to do, as well as other researchers, is go ahead and recycle this glass that's being sent to landfills and recycle it back into uh, concrete, what we like to call glasscrete, I think, originally developed by or uh, mentioned by uh, Dr. Christian Meyer. So what we want to do is we want to look at the term, the definition of recycle. One of the definitions is to make ready for reuse. Another one is to adapt to a new use, and we want to go ahead and adapt it to a new use. This is one of the um, ways of storage of Recycled glass color, this is out of West Virginia, and this is something that we're looking to prevent. And we want to go ahead and use these, these aggregates right here, crush them up into sand size and use it in uh, natural, and use it in uh, concrete applications. So the objective of this research is very simple. We have ACI 211.1 codes that says that if we want a certain PSI strength at 28 days, we want to go ahead and use a certain water to cement ratio. We want to make glasscrete that it can be implemented into the field at a certain strength. So what do we need to do? How do we need to change the water to cement ratio in order to supplement ACI 211 uh, specs in order to get a certain compressive strength at 28 days? So we want to go ahead and then develop specifications for the proper use of glass and concrete. After we do, do, do that, we can then compare the fresh and hardened properties of concrete to glasscrete on a similar water to cement ratio as well as a similar design compressive strength. So we can start at something like 0.5 water cement ratio and get both the, uh, the strength that would be for glass sand as well as the strength for natural sand concrete, then do the same thing at a design 28-day strength. So just go over the typical nomenclature that I'll be talking about throughout this entire presentation. And again, what we wanted to do was we wanted to make sample mixtures that could be used and implemented in the field for either building frames, bridge decks, or pavement slip form type of applications. So we went ahead and said we wanted to do five KSI concrete at 28 days. In order to do that, we had to run tests. So we went ahead and ran many trial and error tests in order to first look at ACI 211.1 for, for a typical natural sand concrete and then convert that back into what would be glass sand concrete. So G means glass, N means natural sand, and five is five KSI, comma 5.0 is then the slump, the design slump that we wanted to attain. We can see the same thing here for uh, pavement and slip form applications for uh, natural sand concrete uh, for 4 KSI and then a 1.5 inch slump. We can see then the same thing here for 4 KSI and 5 inch slump. And this bottom one over here that's got a question mark next to it is that we went ahead and took our glass sand concrete for 4 KSI for 5.0 slump and saw that we needed a 0.48 water cement ratio. 
So we wanted to compare on a similar water to cement ratio what these properties would do. Now, again, we wanted to use, make sample uh, concrete and glass creep. So we wanted to then compare these on that level, saying that we now have a certain strength or a certain water to cement ratio. So our concrete constituents, for the most part, remain the same except the change of glass and natural sand. We have our ASTM C33 uh, number 57 crushed limestone that we use for all of our mixtures. And then we have a natural sand uh, fine aggregate, a uh, ASTM C33 type A river sand from uh, locally in Pennsylvania. And we have our glass sand right here, which I'll get into how we went ahead and manufactured that. What we did was we wanted to make sure that we had a comparison on the same finest modulus. So our finest modulus for our glass, our glass sand was the same as the finest modulus for our natural sand concrete. We used a uh, type 1 cement. Mineral admixtures over here, uh, we have research on the next slide that shows that for a certain fly ash replacement level, we can get, therefore mitigate the alkali silicate reaction. This research right here is mainly focused on the mechanical properties of glass creek compared to natural sand concrete. We understand that for, for uh, glass sand, ASR is really the main struggle with the full implementation of this. So the research that we showed here says 20% of this F class F fly ash can be implement implemented. And since we want to be able to use a sample design mixture, that's something that we're going to have to have into our mix in order to actually implement this. So we went ahead and then implemented 20% of the, cl of the cl certain class F fly ash. Then chemical admixtures of super plasticizer and air and trainer were to make sure that we were able to attain the same air content, which would be 3.0% for all of our mixtures, as well as then super plasticizer. Now, when I say 3.0%, this research was um, sponsored by the Hawaii DOT. And they don't have a lot of problems with freeze thaw, as well as then salt scaling on their bridge decks. So that's why we kept it at, at 3.0. But this could easily be applied to, say, a uh, larger or a higher air content concrete that might be used for a bridge deck in, say, Pennsylvania or Illinois. So our fly ash results here, ASTM C1567. So for the people that aren't too familiar with this test, it's basically the sister test of ASTM 1260, in which you take mortar bars, which are mortar prisms, which are going to be 1 inch by 1 inch by 11 inches, and introduce them into a one normal NaOH solution, and then heat that solution up to 80 degrees C. What this solution there, therefore does is you're basically in a sweet spot of silicate dissolution, and it's going to implement into your system and therefore cause the alkali silicate reaction to respond quicker. So we did research on uh, six different ashes, uh, fly ashes and replacement levels, to see what it would do with the alkali silicate reaction. And here you can see if you just use a con or a glass sand by itself with Portland cement, you get about 0.6 expansion, which is considered deleterious with respect to the alkali silicate reaction. But then when you go ahead and start implementing more fly ash, you can see that you get below your threshold levels. So we found that we wanted to use this class, this uh, F2 right here, at about 20%, which is uh, an expansion level of 0 0.03, which is uh, underneath uh, the specifications an innocuous mixture with respect to the alkali silicate reaction. Here, um, we're going to talk about the, the, the process that we did in order to create glasscrete. We began by, I think I'm knocking something over. Uh, we began by getting a, basically either super sacks from a supplier that was recycling the, uh, the glass itself, or we just went out and drank a bottle of wine, put it over here, and crushed it up and make our own, in our own glass. I like the second one, but we can't drink that much. We did a lot of mixing. But, um, so from there, we went ahead and took it to an LA abrasion machine and did cycles of, it took about 20 kilograms a, a time and went ahead and introduced it to here and did uh, 1,000 to 3,000 cycles and then mixed them on an average of a 50-50 basis in order to get that finest modulus that's going to be the same as the finest modulus for a natural sink. And here you can see that after a few rounds in the LA abrasion machine, you can go from, this is about one inch to your glass sand right over here. Put it into your uh, Einrich S1 counter current mixer. And then I always like this picture. I know it might maybe a little blurry, but it's, uh, whenever you look at concrete out in the field, you always have a nice smooth top on it. You don't see really what's in there. And when you work with glasscrete, you understand that, you know, you have a lot of interactions that's going on in the interior of the system. So I always like looking at this and seeing all the different uh, almost fancy-looking colors and then with, uh, with the aggregate, the coarse aggregate around it. Um, <clears throat> so the experiments that we did when we said that we want to test the fresh and hardened properties of, this, um, of these mixtures, we looked at the slump and the plastic air content, the compressive strength, the elastic modulus, the drying shrinkage, abrasion resistance of the concrete, uh, the RCPT, 
and uh, absorptivity of concrete. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into each one of these tests. Here, again, we went each time to a design fresh air content of 3.0, and then from there we wanted to get what our 28-day compressive strength would be, 5 KSI or 4 KSI, with a design slump for the majority of these mixtures of 5.0. For the rest of this talk, I'm going to talk about our 5.0 slump mixtures, not our 1.5 uh, slump mixtures for respect to time. So you can see here is that glass creep requires less plasticizer in order to reach a target slump for when it's on a same uh, uh, compressive strength basis. And uh, this is uh, something that, that's been seen in literature as well, and that over time with, um, with the aggregate itself, it has a negligible absorption rate as well as then very smooth uh, surface to it, and it actually could flow much better in, in a concrete system or in a fresh system. So therefore, the consistency, you can get to a similar consistency with less uh, plasticizer. And you also see the same thing happening when you have um, the same water to cement ratio underneath the same um, testing methods. And we want to look at, um, in order to achieve the same strength, and I kind of let the cat out of the bag with the beginning uh, slide number three with the nomenclature, but we can see that for natural sand concrete following typical ASTM C211, uh, we got, for 5 KSI, we got a 0.46 water to cement ratio. Then we went ahead and did tests on glasscrete and saw that it was 0.42 water to cement ratio is what we needed to do in order to get a 5 KSI mixture. Then we went ahead and did the same thing to get a 4 KSI mixture and saw that we need to, again, e decrease the water to cement ratio in order to get the same design strength. After we did that, we went ahead and said, okay, 0.48 water cement ratio gets us a 4 KSI con glasscrete uh, at 28 days. Now let's go ahead and compare that to what would be a 0.48 water cement ratio for natural sand concrete. And you can see here it's a fairly significant increase from about 4 KSI, 40, 4070 to almost uh, 4,800 KSI, uh, PSI. Hopefully I didn't say 4,000 4, KSI. That would be really strong. And here we can see the strength development over time, and this is really interesting when you get in to see how glasscrete compares to natural sand concrete over time. We did 1, 3, 7, 28, 90 days, and you can see that glasscrete, when it's first implemented, it has a lower water cement ratio, and therefore at one day it tends to have a stronger um, base to it, and it's a stronger concrete than the natural sand concrete. However, over time, at later ages, the, the uh, natural sand concrete will catch up as well as then overtake that mixture. Uh, what we can see is that early on, when the cement paste is hardening, it's actually developing strength quicker. But then as you get to later, later uh, ages, the, uh, the mixture itself, the aggregate bond between the natural sand or between the glass sand and the uh, cementitious paste starts to break down and becomes a weak spot and therefore will allow failure to occur quicker in that spot. And you can see here, for 0.48 water cement ratio, it kind of, the mixtures develop strength very similarly early on, but then experience the same type of issue as the strength that development goes on in time. At one day, they have very similar strengths, so about two, two, uh, k, uh, 2 KSI across the board. Then as the strengths, as the days go on, you see that the natural sand concrete will eventually uh, be able to de develop strength at a, um, at a greater basis. And so here, this was the main objective of the research here, is to create a curve like this. We talked about it on the second slide, is that at seven days and 28 days, what do we need to do in order to get a, a concrete that has a certain uh, compressive strength? And so here you have our um, water cement ratio versus seven-day strength, and you can see the red line is your typical natural sand concrete. Again, this is all with 20% fly ash replacement. And then you have um, the blue line, which shows what you need to do in order to create a glass sand concrete with the water cement ratio. Then here's the 28-day one, which is, um, which is what is in the ACI codes. And you can see is that if we want a, what it looks like that got a little um, shifted, but if we want to have a 4 KSI concrete at 28 days, we can see the water cement ratio that we would need to do for natural sand concrete. Then we can see how we need to move it in order to get for our glass sand concrete. And then this will help us then go ahead and implement this in the field on a quicker basis. We also ran uh, elastic modulus testing of our natural sand concrete versus our glass creek concrete. And we saw that um, both at the same design strength and the same water to cement ratio, that the elastic modulus of the glass creek is greater. Um, this is, uh, uh, what's it, four? Uh, 4,000 KSI, and um, 
So what we saw is that on an average basis, the uh, natural sand concrete has a, a lower elastic modulus than the actual uh, glasscrete uh, aggregate itself. Now that could be directly related to the fact that soda lime silicate glass is, is made on a very consistent basis with say 73% uh, silica and then different, uh, different um, uh, say uh, 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 sodium as well as an aluminum into the system. But for natural sand, it's very variable. So it may depend upon the actual fine aggregate that you're using in your mix. So each time that you do get uh, a mixture, you always wanna make sure that you go ahead and run these tests to make sure that it is the same for each aggregate that you're testing. And there's. We also went ahead and did uh, drying shrinkage. Um, and you can see here is that for natural sand concrete, we have a, a greater shrinkage, drying shrinkage over time than we do for uh, glass sand concrete. Um, here we can see that it can be related to uh, the elastic modules that we discussed earlier. Also at the same water to cement ratio, we have a, a lower drying shrinkage for glasscrete. This could also be attributed to the negligible water absorption for a glass, uh, glasscrete aggregate compared to natural sand aggregate. We talk about abrasion resistance. And abrasion resistance is very important if we want to implement this in, say, a warehouse or on pavements. And uh, what we saw was that for the same design strength, glasscrete has a lower abrasion resistance. Now, this is, would be understood because we have a lower water cement ratio, therefore we would have a stronger binder and we'd be able to resist wear and tear much more uh, with greater ease. However, if we then look at the same uh, water to cement ratio, we see that the natural sand concrete is more abrasion resistant. This could be attributed to the fact that the uh, natural sand aggregate has a greater hardness than the, than the, um, uh, glass, uh, than the glass aggregate. Also, the aggregate paste bond is very important in this application that the aggregate does not uh, bond as well to the cement paste when it's a glass aggregate than when it is a uh, natural sand aggregate. RCPT results, and this is uh, ASTMC 1202, in which we go ahead and connect our um, plexiglass blade, uh, plates to a voltage source, and then try and then send our uh, chloride ions through our concrete in order to get better ideas of how chloride ions have passed through our system. And here we want to make sure that um, we stay underneath a certain threshold um, of charge passed in order to see if we are, say, low, very low, or moderate in um, in how well we'd be able to resist steel corrosion in the end. And you can see that across the board, even at the same water cement ratio and at the same strength, glass aggregate has a lower um, or has a greater resistance to uh, chloride penetration. This can be attributed to uh, the glass aggregate itself is an impermeable, it's basically an impermeable surface being added into your system, which will therefore uh, discontinue the ions trying to pass through your cementitious uh, pore system. And you can see it's the same thing for, um, it would be the same water cement ratio basis. We talk about water absorptivity, and this is ASTMC 1585. What we did was we, uh, we went ahead and sealed the surface of these. I don't think I have. Um, uh, we, we used electrical tape around the uh, perimeter of the concrete and then put a uh, little plastic bag on top and then used a commercial waterproofing sealing uh, around, the, around the edges that connect to the concrete in order to make sure that we're only getting one surface exposed and therefore is absor uh, absorbing the water. And um, the results that we have for the same water cement ratio as well as for the same design strength, we do see that glasscrete absorbs less water. And this is, um, again, goes back to the fact that the aggregate is not, is not allowing as much uh, moisture to get through for the same water cement ratio. But on the same, nat on the same um, design strength, you would see that that binder would be a stronger binder because it has a lower water cement ratio. So therefore, you would also expect it to absorb less water. So our conclusions uh, for our research are shown here. Um, we saw that uh, plasticizer to reach a similar consistency, we use a less uh, plasticizer for both the same similar design strength as well as the same water to cement ratio. For abrasion resistance on the same design strength, we saw that uh, the abrasion resistance was increased. However, the same water to cement ratio, we saw that it was decreased. For ion penetration across the board, ion penetration was reduced. Uh, for drying shrinkage, across the board drying shrinkage was reduced. And for the elastic modulus, we saw that the modulus was increased for both the same uh, design strength as well as the same water to cement ratio. Um, and then sorptivity, the water sorptivity was decreased for both the uh, design, design strength and the same water to cement ratio. Uh, with that, I'd like to say thank you and uh, also say that this research was sponsored by uh, the Hawaii DOT, which I think I mentioned earlier and the U.S. Department, uh, the federal uh, FHWA.
And if you have any questions, I would love to take it now.